Ormond Croft Community School in West London is trying to find ways of bringing engineering into the classroom. To help them, they've asked Toby Oliver, a track engineer for London Underground and STEM ambassador, to pay a visit. As a STEM ambassador, Toby wants to inspire young people into science, technology, engineering and mathematics and has designed a series of exciting engineering exercises for a class of Year 5s. As a track engineer, Toby works on designing many different components of London Underground's tube tracks, such as signals, points and crossings, and train buffers. To help design these parts effectively, Toby needs to look at how they are manufactured, and he's come to the Lilybridge Depot in West Kensington in London. This is the standard raw material that comes in in terms of track manufacture. It's a standard 60-foot length of rail, and so sort of from this, you know, the, the manufacturing workshop can create all sorts of different types of points and crossings, you know, with the sort of a wide variety of machines that you can see. This is the uh, profiling shop. They might use the profiling shop to cut, cut the shapes out of the, the steel and then the, the welders weld it together in the, in the shape that, that's required. This is one of the different types of track gauge that they use on the railway to make sure that the track is actually um, put in correctly. It also measures the distance between rails as well, which is what we call the gauge, which is important as well. Our work as track designers fits into this, uh, this depot in the way that we provide the designs which are actually taken out to site and installed. All this work helps in the running of a transport system used by millions of Londoners every day. Although Toby is a full-time engineer, he's passionate about inspiring young people about STEM subjects in a way he once was. I initially applied to be a STEM ambassador because um, I was inspired by one of my previous physics teachers. Uh, I just really enjoyed his lessons, the way he sort of brought them to life, and I wanted to try and uh, do the same thing. Year 5 class teacher Emma Bird is really keen the lesson goes well, as it's the first time they've had a visit from a STEM ambassador. Over the past um, three years or so, we've made really great progress in English and maths, and that was reflected in our latest um, Ofsted report. Um, however, science is something that uh, we still need to work on and bring up to the same standard. So we're really keen to get um, outside experts in and to give the children as many opportunities as we can. I'm here today to turn Class 5 into a group of bridge engineers. Toby's first activity is designed to get the kids thinking about the stability of an arch bridge. And for this, he'll need some volunteers. Now I want you to put your palms together. Right. Now I want you to slowly shuffle backwards. Keep on going. And lean towards each other. Lean towards each other. Don't go so far as you fall over. Now, I want you to describe to the class where you can feel the forces. Um, I can feel it in my arms. So you can feel a pushing force from Abdul. And where else can you feel the force? Where's that force going? Um, where's the other, the other part of it? Yeah, like, it goes down my side as well. It goes down your sides, and does it keep on going? Yeah, and it to where? finally reaches my legs. He uses a second pair of volunteers to strengthen the bridge. So if you come here, I'd just like you to sit on the floor so he can put the back of it, yeah, to support the back of his legs. And if you do the same, now, because you've got these supports behind you, it should be stronger. So if I try and push down, you know, <laughs> I can't break it, you see. You've recreated the structure of an arch bridge with lots of support at the sides that helps to support the, the force that's being transferred from the centre of the bridge through the arches, which are U2, and into U2 supports here. Toby takes the group outside to carry on the exercise. They'll need the ideas they're developing now for the next activity, so it's important everybody gets a go. I'm asking the pupils to uh, enact a real arch bridge so they can physically feel the forces at work in the arch through their bodies and they can learn how to reinforce it. So I think that's a really good way for them to you know, understand quite a sort of abstract concept of the force being transferred through the bridge. At the beginning, you didn't feel very strong, and then you did. What made the difference? Because um, they were supporting us with the back of our legs. Yeah, but I'm... 
Once they finished doing what I told them, just off their own initiative, they started enacting different structures. Some of them came together in force to create domes. Some of them were sort of sticking their legs out to counterbalance themselves. So I was really pleased the way that they were kind of experimenting. Instead of just doing like that and you've got to support all the weight of your body, you're using a balance at the other side to balance you out. And that's called a cantilever type of bridge. It was definitely the more practical parts of the session where the children were doing things themselves, experiencing it for themselves. That's always what the children are going to remember and, and that's what you want when they're learning something new. Getting a STEM ambassador involved at the school was the idea of the school's science coordinator, Maria Chapel. Before talking with Toby, they discussed what they wanted out of the visit. I've asked for the STEM ambassadors to come into school to run a workshop with Year 5. So they could link in with some of the other work that we're doing in science and across other areas of the curriculum? Oh, yes, as part of our creative curriculum, we try to make the subjects as cross-curricular as possible. The good thing about having the STEM ambassadors in is being able to make use of their excellent knowledge and skills which we don't necessarily have in school. So we're using their expertise to help teach children. Emma and Toby had planned and discussed the activities before Toby's visit. The morning before the lesson, they meet for a quick catch-up. Is it going to tie into anything that you've done before or maybe lead on to something ne next time? Do you think well, it's great because it covers forces on which they'd be working on in science um, and also some of the shape work they do in maths and it links it all together. It's important to liaise with the STEM ambassador to make sure that the, the level is going to be appropriate for the children they're coming in to teach um, and also if it can fit in with anything that we're working on currently in school. For the main activity, each group will have to use the knowledge they've already learnt, together with strong teamwork, to design and construct a bridge made only from straws. The teams are competing to see who can make the strongest bridge. This curve you've got here, what shape are the straws? Are they, are they curved or are they, are they straight lines? So you might need to bear that in mind. To give them some pointers with their design, Toby demonstrates the difference in strength between a triangle and a square. What can you see is happening to the straws? Oh, they're bending. They're bending. So what we're we saying, that the, the force that I'm pushing on the top is, you know, it's affecting the straws. The straws are trying to push back, aren't they? Yeah? What about when I push down on the square? What's happening to the straws? Are they, are they, are they bending as much as they were on the triangle? No. All the strength of this shape is dependent on the joints, you see. This shape, it's got the strength of the members, which are the straws, and the joints helping it. This one, we're putting all the force onto the joints, and that's why it's not as strong. We also thought of this to put a square inside, uh, the triangle inside a square, and this makes more triangles right here. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, you can yeah. see that you've broken that square up into three triangles, which would be a strong shape. Yeah. I, I think it was really fun and, it, um, but, and some, even though some of it was hard, it was really fun. I love the activities. They were very interesting and um, I really like them. But how do you like um, use all these ideas in your job? As engineers, we have to develop you know, strong bridges to, to carry the train safely over them. You can see this kind of frame design that you're doing. You'll see it in bridges, but you'll also see it in uh, equipment on the railway that holds up signals, uh, holds up signs. So we use this principle uh, as engineers wherever we need to put up sort of a lightweight structure. An important project that Toby has been working on recently is the design of new train buffers to be installed at various tube stations. This is a uh, train arrester. You might know it as a buffer stop. Uh, they're placed at the ends of sidings and uh, terminal stations to stop the trains should anything, uh, should anything go wrong. You can see some, uh, some weird and wonderful shapes on the front here. Um, these are there because it has a stop a variety of trains. Today I've come to check some of the design features of the arrestor. You know, check that the actual arrest that's been built is what it matches the, this design here that we've got. The thing I enjoy about my job is the kind of balance between the design work in the office and actually coming 
coming out to places like this and seeing it all being put together or sort of being on site and seeing it seeing it go in so it's, it's the balance between kind of technical sort of design and sort of practical installation and sort of problem solving that I, that, that I like the best. You can probably see behind me a uh, train arrestor on the crane at the moment on its way to site. I think this one's actually going to Amersham, which is, which is nice because it's one of the designs that I've actually um, done, so I'm actually getting to see it you know, on its way. Back in the classroom, it's the moment of truth for our year fives. Who thinks it will hold 200 grams? That's the minimum that we're testing today. Let's see. Put it in the cup. No. <laughs> Easily. Now, do you think it's going to hold 500 grams? Oh. Yeah. What about 700? Right, now the big, the big test. Can it hold a kilogram? <laughs> no. So I'm going to go straight up to 700 for this one. Oh, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. What about a kilogram? <laughs> 200 grams. 700 is not going to hold. Uh, I think 700 grams for this one is going to be reasonably easy. It looks quite well made. Yes! Come on, Bridge, stay in there. No, it's Who thinks this one's a good one? I do as well, actually. No one's just held a kilogram yet, has it? 1.2 kilograms. Oh, but, so that's the best one so far. The final group's bridge needs to be able to hold one kilogram to tie for first place. Come on, John, come on. Can it do 700? Oh. <laughs> if it holds 1,000, you're equal first. Well done. This was the winning bridge because, you know, it had equal strength throughout it. All these other bridges, whether it was because they'd used, we'd used different sizes of triangles or, you know, our, our joints were a bit different. There was always a weak point on these other bridges, but this one, no. this one was strong because it was a regular shape and we used, we'd used the triangles that we learned about before. The activities that we did today, I think worked really well. Um, I really liked how they brought the knowledge through from, that, from my preliminary one into the, into the final building of the bridge. It's easy to excite children about engineering as long as you get them get them doing it you know because that's really how they learn about the, the the theory they enjoyed particularly the more practical aspects um, of the session today um, and also the competition element um, when they were building bridges at the end and I think because they enjoyed it um, and they really got into that experience that's something that they will remember